All right, welcome to the August 2018 monthly horoscope. We're doing things a little bit differently today. Um, you're looking at my notes and you're not seeing a very good image of it because honestly, they're just not that interesting to look at. Um, so uh, I mostly I want you to focus on the content, not the visuals. <laughs> Okay, so this month, um, it, we've made it through July intact for the most part. So that in and of itself means that we're off to a good start. And many of you uh, may be feeling really exhausted because even if you haven't been keeping up with current events, the planetary energies have been so ramped up and all over the place and really forcing the hand of a lot of stuff that... Um, you're feeling the, that energetic push and pull. So everybody's feeling more than a little frazzled right now um, and very tired and sensitive and may not even necessarily understand what that's about. So be gentle with yourself and kind to other people because uh, we are uh, not quite through the eclipses and we're all kind of struggling with that morning after hangover sort of thing when work's got to get done. All right. So this month starts out with some really nice stuff. Oh my God. Best news ever. Finally, some good news. Okay. So we have the sun in Leo, which is where it loves to be because Leo is the sun's home. And uh, with that, what that means is the sun is able to operate uh, consistent with its nature. So wherever you have Leo in your chart, you're going to find that, that area of life is running fairly smoothly and everything is doing what it needs to do. The only time this is different is if you have some discordant or challenging aspect um, around this particular degree or any of the degrees of Leo as the sun passes through. But if you otherwise don't have anything uh, that's being that's having its buttons pushed that's typically is problematic for you to begin with the affairs of the house where leo falls in your chart will run smoothly this month now there are some of you who are saying but 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 wait isn't mercury retrograde yes yes my friends it is um but that does not mean that things are going to be nearly the kerfluffle that they have been before so with that said, with Mercury also retrograde and simultaneously in the sign of Leo with that sun, some of the things that I would look for are literally, are you ready? Opportunities to redo stuff, literally second chances um, and uh, the, the ability to kind of go back and, and unearth hidden gems and treasures that we almost lost. So this is actually a really nice redemptive position with this Mercury retrograde that allows us to go back and um, redo stuff or, or get a second chance. So for those of you who need to go back and find information or you need to go back and make some amends and repairs, you know, like the 12-step program, right? This is a phenomenal time to go make it right or to go searching for that thing you thought you had almost lost forever. Because remember, the sun there with Mercury, the sun is in a sign of rulership. So things are going to run more smoothly. And Mercury is asking us to go back and dig deeper. Now, the other thing that makes this particular combination so special is that with that sun and Mercury together, right there, that little um, hidden treasure that we're looking at, it is also squaring Jupiter. Now, Typically, this would not necessarily be such an impressive thing. Sun squares Jupiter all the time, and so does Mercury. The thing that makes this significant is that Jupiter right now, next to Venus, is literally the only planet that is direct all month. So Jupiter is sailing along, doing what Jupiter does in all the best ways, and it's involving that Sun, Mercury, and Leo. So find the house where Sun and Mercury in Leo is in your chart and know that it's going to get an extra big boost of blessings 
and lucky breaks and miracles because of Jupiter, that Jupiter involvement. Now, Jupiter is in a square to these planets, so there is the possibility that we could overdo things a little bit. So for those of you who like to gamble or take risks or are a little too um, generous in your attentions, maybe a little overly enthusiastic by nature in your relationships, you guys want to dial that down a little bit because Jupiter is going to make you even more excessive than usual and a little more optimistic than you really should be for you guys. And you know who you are. You know, you tend to be a little over the top, over enthusiastic, over everything. You want to dial it back because this Jupiter for you is going to be more problematic because it's going to make you more of what you already are, which may not necessarily be the best thing right now. Um, so trying to save you some aggravation here. But otherwise, I would look for some really uh, nice miracles and opportunities to to really fix things, as it were, and to, to find that one thing that'll help swing you forward and send you with some momentum into the direction that you need to go for, you know, a better life and a better version of yourself because we are all about being the best possible version of ourselves around here. <laughs> okay, now the month starts out with Venus in the last degrees of Virgo, and within a week or so, it actually goes into, thank God, uh, the sign of Libra. So for the first week, while Venus is in Virgo, uh, I'm sorry, I'm v Virgo. <laughs> while Venus is in Virgo, Vir oh my God, Virgo, <laughs> It is coming out of a trine with Pluto. So that feeling of being hungover and exhausted and just wrung out like an emotional rag is very, very strong at this time. Um, people who have been doing a lot of significant, uh, what is it, healing or emotional work or, or any type of like deep entrenched kind of really get to the heart of the matter this has been a very productive time so for the next week or so in that first week of august we can expect some recovery time the most important thing to remember for that first week of august recovery time because once we get into the second week of august ta-da we're heading right into an eclipse so this whole week that venus is in the late degrees of virgo getting ready to change signs we're also the week before another eclipse so it's kind of that calm before the storm but this is not a storm so here's the thing remember this is actually a good month so I don't want you to be alarmed or panic. It's not that bad. This is actually really, really good. So this is just kind of like the recovery period and that second second wind, get, catching your breath, right? You know, when you catch that second wind or a breath when you're running and you're like, woo, and then you, you charge up and you're ready to go again. So that's what that first week is. Now, as Venus slides into this, its own sign of Libra, it will function so much better. So again, look for the house position where Libra is in your chart and you will find that this particular area uh, gets a lot of extra benefit and a lot of extra boost and a lot of more ease. However, there is a caveat. This first week of Venus and Libra, which would be the second week of the month, it is still going to make a square to Saturn. So we've got to get through that square to Saturn first. So all this work that we did when Venus was trining Pluto, and now that first week of August, we've got that recovery time where we're trying to catch their, their second wind, trying to get their breath again, right? Then it slides into Libra, where, which is where it wants to be. So you would think this would be party time. However, we're not quite done yet because as it does that, it goes into a square with Saturn. And this is where we really have to... Uh, what is the expression? Put our money where our mouth is. This is where we, we have to put action behind and commit action behind the thought or the statement to show commitment. So this could, that second week of August when Venus moves into Libra, this could be a challenging week for some folks. Um, and this could go well into uh, the third week <laughs> of the August. So um, but mostly it's just that one little wobbly week right there when Venus is in early Libra. So 
with that said, act from a place of your highest integrity at this time um, and understand that people are going, people who have concerns or fears or issues, all of those things are going to be heightened and on full display. It's not that they ever went away and it's not that they suddenly came into existence. It's just that at this particular time, the spotlight is shined on the things that are really difficult for them. So a little kindness goes a long way at this point. Once we get past that, Venus is rocking and rolling in Libra, doing all sorts of nice things um, because it's also at that point going to set up a beautiful sextile back to that sun in Leo and that Mercury in Leo. So once we get past that little wobbly spot, we work through those stuff, Venus in the later degrees of Libra will sextile that sun, Mercury and Leo. And again, give the house where the sun and Mercury are even more boost and even more cooperation and even more ease and certainly a lot more desire to make things beautiful and nice. So we're really starting to feel better at that point and we're really trying to make a more beautiful world around ourselves. Now, as this happens, the eclipse will occur on August 11th and it will be at 18 Leo. When the eclipse occurs at August on August 11th at 18 Leo, <clears throat> it will be in, so it's going to be in a quincunx to Pluto. Um, it will move into, because the eclipse is in effect during most of the month, and we'll, the Venus is, will be approaching it, but it will also, more importantly, be squaring Jupiter. So this eclipse is going to quincunx Pluto and it's going to square Jupiter at the same time, and it's coming from the sign of Leo. So one of the things that we can expect to see is a lot of really exaggerated, very theatrical, dramatic uh, displays of confidence or defiance, uh, shows of will and willpower, people really making it a point to make a a big display of digging their heels in, Um, or also, uh, people making it a point of really making a great display of showing their love and their their sincerity about something. Lots and lots of exaggerated, powerful feelings are occurring with this partic- these particular aspects with this eclipse. And a lot of it has to do with us getting in touch with what really drives our train. Where is our passion? you know, and where have we been spinning our wheels? Because we were just having this conversation. Okay. And where we can literally just eliminate dead weight. So one of the things that we're going to see with this particular eclipse for everybody, and certainly in the house where you're seeing this, the Leo, okay, where the eclipse is occurring is uh, a, a desire and an urge and a push to clean up and to literally get rid of the dead weight in your life because there's a there's a confidence and an optimism and a desire to move forward and expand and to have more and to be bigger and brighter and bolder and you can't do that when you've got a lot of drag on the boat or the plane so we're going to get rid of the excess weight or want to get rid of the excess weight so we can kind of lighten the load as it were and move forward again because jupiter is involved be very careful that we're not being overly optimistic especially if we are by nature (laughs) a very over the top sort of personality to begin with through the month we will have saturn continuing to trine uranus which is phenomenal saturn trining uranus is going to allow us the opportunity to really hunker down and fine tune the system. So those of you who are actively involved in upcycling, recycling, DIY, repurposing, all the sort of stuff where you are salvaging something, whether it's people or projects or things or the environment, whatever salvage is a very big word with the Saturn Uranus combination. This is going to continue to be a very fruitful month. Things will move slow. Uh, again, because everything is retrograde and that's okay because it's giving us a chance and the time to kind of go through, you know, and double check the system and, and look more closely at weak areas we may have missed otherwise. Now, when the eclipse occurs on August 11th, within days of that, Mars will retrograde back from Aquarius back in the sign of Capricorn. 
So Mars retrograde, the people have a lot of different ideas about Mars retrograde. So Mars retrograde one, yes, it does mean uh, a lot of frustration and a lot of slowing down and obstacles and hurdles and feeling like people are doing everything they can to keep it from moving forward. Mars retrograde is not a fun position. Um, However, what the retrograde does, it allows Mars to be more, or I'm sorry, not allows, it forces Mars to be much more thoughtful. So with Mars retrograde this month and Mercury retrograde this month, the people who do the best right now are the people who are the chess players. So the people who are strategists, who literally have the war board set out in front of them and are making the long-term or the lo pl playing the long game, right? So they're not in it for the immediate instant result. Like they, they're, they've they got their moves mapped out four, five, six decades or generations ahead. Uh, chess players, like these are the people who do exceptionally well this month. So if you're not that person, <clears throat> um, understand that everything right now is asking you to slow down and be very considerate of what you're actually getting involved in or committing to, okay? And maybe, not be in such a hot rush to go sign on for anything. Um, if you are the kind of person that is the long game person, long range, long view uh, chess player and strategist, this is your golden month. So you don't need me to tell you how to make this work for you. Okay. Um, other, th oh, right. So at some point, right around the 14th, Mars will retrograde back into the sign of Capricorn. So Mars will be in those late degrees of Capricorn. Now, um, in those late degrees of Capricorn, it's not really making an exact insign aspect. However, here's the rub. It will be making an out of sign square to Uranus. So it's still within orbit, but they're in very different signs. So uh, and that's going to be around the 15th, 16th, so, and 17th. So it's very, very close. And it's just, it's only for a few days. So here's the thing. When Mars and Uranus are making an out of sign square to each other, it takes all of the irritation and all of the misplaced aggression and doubles it, right? So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> there's an expression they, they use for fighting called a haymaker, right? So it's like somebody who's fighting blindly. So they're swinging their arms around wildly. They've got their eyes closed. They don't even know what they're aiming at. They're just swinging their arms like a crazy person trying to defend themselves or, or to make a good offense. Um, and in boxing, those the type of movement I'm talking about is called a haymaker, right? So your, your arms are flailing around like a haymaker. Um, this is a haymaker aspect. So be uh, very mindful <laughs> of, uh, pr of provoking people around you. Don't do it if you possibly can, because what will happen is you won't get necessarily a direct reasoned, specifically aimed response. What you may get is somebody who literally starts throwing haymakers in every direction and unfortunately ends up hurting a lot of innocent people around you instead of you, the instigator who deserved it. So just out of consideration and courtesy for other people who don't deserve punishment for your nonsense, don't provoke people. Um, also too, again, because this is an out of sign square, look for people who, the provocateurs, as it were, that are operating behind the scenes um, and pushing buttons that are harder to spot. So the real culprits in any explosive situation that you find yourself in through this month will be with people that are going to be very hard to identify at first glance. But remember, all these planets are retrograde, Mercury is retrograde, and Mars is retrograde as well. So what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to slow down and take a second look and reconsider what we're actually hearing and seeing so we can really accurately determine who's really responsible for this. So pay attention. Because this is, this is the provocateurs are the ones hiding behind other people. So it's like using other people as a human shield sort of stuff. So don't uh, take everything at surface value. There's a lot more going on here. So it's the quiet ones that you, you think are like nothing. You don't pay attention to. These are the ones you got to watch. Because remember the strategists, the chess players, they're the ones who are shining this month and really uh, rocking and rolling. 
All right, some other things that are going on this month. We have Jupiter remaining in that beautiful trine to Neptune. Yay! Now, for those of you who have Jupiter and Neptune or any planets at those degrees in water signs, 14 and 16 of the water signs, you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I'm not seeing anything from this. Where's the good stuff? Like, oh, I thought something good was supposed to be happening. Um, and it is. But remember, these are water signs and Jupiter and Neptune are both Pisces rulers. So the thing about it is with Neptune and Jupiter being the ruler of Pisces, when they're engaged with each other, the effects are not obvious. This is not like an air sign. Um, I'm sorry, this is not like a fire sign, which is very loud and brash and in your face. So you see it coming from a mile away when the event transpires. It's not like an earth sign that kind of drops on your head like a ton of bricks and has a very uh, clearly defined beginning, middle and end around the, the manifestation. And it's really not, not like an air sign where you can kind of feel it, you know, and there's, there's a lot of mental buildup and expectation and anticipation uh, long before the event occurs, you know, because it was communicated to you long before it arrived. Water signs, especially Pisces, this is all very undercover sort of stuff. So dreams are very important right now. Intuition is very important right now. Um, planting seeds for the future is very important right now. So all of this uh, stuff that you feel impelled or compelled to do that don't necessarily give you any material benefit from doing it. These are the things you want to go with because it's a very Jupiter Neptune thing. So we're paying into our karmic bank ahead of time when we follow those impulses to do things to assist, care for, or support other people with no necessarily direct or, or obvious benefit to ourselves that's the secret so the good stuff's coming trust me it's happening um but like every miracle and blessing it's not necessarily as obvious as we'd like it to be <laughs> okay and what else do we have here lovies so right the other thing i want to touch on all in all it's going to be a good strong month we've got some really nice times thank god we really need some nice pleasurable times and the last part of summer this august well summer here on this side of the planet this month of august will give us plenty of opportunities to be indulgent and to be uh, creative and and loving and romantic and passionate and dance and sing and play all the things we so desperately need to do um, we'll have those opportunities now granted things may not necessarily be as whoop whoop over the top as we want them to be but that's okay because we are coming out of a really heavy month we're still in the thick of things you know it's and we're still kind of dealing with uh what is it the psychic hangover as it were you know, and we still got a ton more work we got to get done. So we're going to catch our second wind and we're going to have some stuff that'll help build us back up and, and give us more energy and give us a, a little more inspiration to keep those sails open. So the last thing I want to say about this month is that with this, with this eclipse on the 11th and with Mars stationing retrograde on the 14th, we also have Mercury stationing direct on the 19th so that's a very very busy week right in there because on top of these things all happening with each other they're also uh having relationships with each other so we've got all kinds of aspects happening now this sun mercury is a very pivotal fourth month because we do have the eclipse there mercury is stationing there stationing direct there um so it's it takes a lot of prominence this month with this sun mercury one of the things that i would also look at is because we know we just talked about the sun mercury scoring jupiter it, the sun mercury will also be quincunxing neptune and pisces and remember for you folks that are kind of over the top and have a little bit of an issue with a restraint or moderation you know or um what 
is the word I'm looking for? Uh, curtailing yourself, inhibiting yourself, you know, delayed gratification sort of stuff. This will be, I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to be a very challenging month for you. So for those of you who are also dealing with any type of addiction issues, whether it is drugs or alcohol or love, like a love addiction or uh, gambling, whatever the addiction is, this month is going to be a bit of a, a, a minefield for you because there are going to be a lot of um, a lot of opportunities to kind of push you in the wrong direction and reactivate that addictive compulsive kind of behavior. So I want you guys to take extra special care of yourself and check in with people who care about you that you can trust, you know, to kind of reel you in before you get too far out. So this is definitely a month where you want to be really on top of that stuff. If you know people who have these sort of things, you want to try to uh, head them off the pass before it gets that back. This is going to be a really challenging month for them. Okay. Oh, and I also forgot to mention on August 7th. So here's the dates that are, and they're all stacked on top of each other, like little penguins, right? August 7th, August 11th, August 19th, and August 14th. That whole, like literally the middle of the month is like kerpow, all sorts of fun stuff going on. <laughs> as it were. So August 7th, Uranus will retrograde in the sign of Taurus. So Uranus is going to turn around and kind of back up a little bit. Now, when it does this, it won't be that bad because what it will actually do is it will start moving away from Saturn. It's still very close. So we're still feeling it, um, but it will give a little bit of breathing room uh, with that Saturn trying. So that... Um, Uranus, Saturn, trying separate and giving a little bit of space in there is going to make it a little easier to get some perspective um, and also to kind of organize ourselves a little bit. The pressure, there will be less pressure to do something um, around this time, around August 7th, because again, that first week of August is downtime. It's literally our recovery week. And also, uh, but here's the thing, there's always a caveat, right? At right around the 14th, once we get past that first week of August and we start heading towards the 14th, which is that second week of August, second and third week of August, when Mars moves back into those late degrees of Capricorn, right about that time, Uranus will be further back uh, into the early degrees of Taurus, which is going to make that square between them, that Mars Uranus square, tighter again. So the pressure will be on, but not the pressure to get something done that we were feeling with the Saturn and Mars trying. The pressure we're going to feel again with this Mars on a square uh, around the 14th is going to be more of that erratic uh, kind of um, mm, crazy making haymaker pressure. So you really, 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 when Mars changes signs, like I said, you really want to be very careful that you're not provoking people. Um, and if you are an agent provocateur, I strongly beg you to not mess around with people right now, because when you set people off, they're not coming at you. They're going to end up hurting innocent people around you and them probably a lot more seriously than you realize. So don't do it. Don't be that person. All right. So. Uh, this month, we've got this beautiful Jupiter direct aspecting the eclipse degree and the sun Mercury. Mercury will go direct about a week after we have the eclipse. So once that eclipse is here and gone and, mer and clears the air, Mercury will go direct and, and things will, will understand where everything's at. And we'll be able to have meaningful dialogue that's less fractious and contentious. So really good stuff there for you guys who are trying to salvage relationships and salvage some things in your life. For those of you who are trying to sort out some sticky puzzles uh, and problems and logistics, you'll find that this eclipse really will clear everything out. And by the time Mercury goes direct a week later, you'll have your fantastic aha movement, or you'll have that lucky break or whatever that divine intervention is that gives you that missing piece of the puzzle. So use this time to do your analysis and, you know, do your repairs and do your recovery and understand that it's all going to fall into place after the 19th. All right. Um, and, and what else? And that's it. So that is our August, 2018, uh, horoscope. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
and as always it's lovely talking to you and i hope we'll see you next month um a couple of housekeeping things because i like to put my housekeeping at the end if you are not a supporter uh, i do have a patreon page dollar a month which is twelve dollars a year you spend more than that for coffee at starbucks i know because i've had coffee at starbucks <laughs> um, and that will help sur- support the cause so i can do more stuff also on the patreon page for subscribers only there will be additional information about the aspects coming up through the month and and sign by sign sort of stuff so people who are looking for individual aries taurus gemini cancer scopes horoscopes that's only ever going to be on the patreon page um, for subscribers because that's actually a lot of time consuming work on my end so people who should have it are the people who want to support that sort of effort so it's kind of my thank you to my patreon surprise subscribers <laughs> to give that to them um and of course audio we're going to do some self-care videos and all sorts of stuff so you know how it goes um, and that is it. So, uh, other things we'll be back on in a couple of days or a couple of weeks with some tarot card readings, um, some fortune telling. And, uh, and again, uh, I'm taking a poll. If you guys are interested in astrology, one-on-one classes taught on video or rebroadcast through video, uh, certainly let me know. And if you have any suggestions or requests, uh, as far as what to put on a video, I'm very open to hearing, uh, what would work for you. Okay. So that is it, my friends. You have a phenomenal August. If you have the opportunity to go out and socialize and and have a little party and relax and enjoy the pleasures of the month, then for by all means, go indulge in it. Get your second wind, catch your second breath, you know, get your recuperation in. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.